All right, I think we are live. We are live. Uh, let's maximize my screen hey, here. Hey, how are you doing? Hey, good. And uh, hello, folks. Uh, a very good morning, good afternoon, good evening. And uh, welcome to the Teleric R1 2022 release webinar. Um, hope uh, all of you are doing well and you've had uh, a good start uh, to the year. We have been very busy and uh, we are here to unpack everything we have done and our teams have put together for you in the R1 uh, release. And we're going to talk about all things web and mobile and uh, desktop today. Uh, so let's get started. Um, so quick introductions. I am uh, one of your hosts, Sam Basu, and with me, I have a good friend, Ed. Ed Charbonneau, uh, we are both um, developer advocates. Um, you know, we um, work in .NET mostly, a little bit of JavaScript, but we mostly uh, talk about the Telerik uh, things, uh, the Telerik side of uh, our family, and all the things we do to make developers a little bit more successful, all the UI, all the frameworks, and all the, uh, you know, productivity gains that we benefit from uh, you know, use, utilizing our stuff. So um, these are our, you know, social handles. If you need to get hold of us, uh, please, uh, please feel free to. Uh, we do, you know, uh, stand on the shoulder of giants on these um, uh, webinars. There are a lot of our teammates who, uh, you know, engineers, uh, PMs, product marketing, and, you know, uh, product managers who put together the, these releases. And there are, a lot of them are in the back room. So while you just see the two of us, uh, we have a small army. Um, backing us up and so feel free to ask away questions so uh, we're going to go for two hours i'm going to talk about uh, what the agenda is so you know exactly what to ex expect but uh, you know like i said we are all about developer success with everything we do uh, you see across Teleric and kendi ui and all of our productivity tools we are all invested in, in your success um, so we are, uh, you know, talking about the R1 release today. Uh, if you hadn't, this is kind of a uh, thing from last week. Uh, if you had not joined us, just so you know, we are big on Twitch, uh, which is a platform where we all get together, the developer advocates, and we do some live coding. We have a little fun and we uh, try to, you know, play around with uh, code as you would be doing so. Uh, and last week, we kind of had a whole week where we invited our engineering folks uh, to kind of have an interactive live stream where we kind of dug into uh, some of the things that went into the release. So the release has been out for about 10 days now. Um, I will talk about how you can go and get updates uh, for all the bits that you use. But again, if you had not joined us uh, last week on Twitch, please consider uh, you know, joining us throughout the year. Uh, we, we stream a lot uh, throughout the week. So let's talk about this week. We actually started webinars last uh, or yesterday. Uh, Tuesday, February 1st, we started with all things JavaScript. And you saw our folks talk about all things Kendi UI, you know, for jQuery, for Angular, React, and Vue. So that was all uh, web things, all the JavaScript uh, things. Uh, today, we are on, Ed and me are on, to talk about all things .NET, which is where, uh, you know, Ed and me spend most of our time. And we are passionate. Uh, so if you're looking for an agenda, this is kind of what we are covering. All of the Teleric suites across web, mobile, and desktop is what we're going to cover. Uh, Ed's, going to, Ed's our resident web expert. The first hour is going to be all things web, and that's what he's going to dive into. Everything from ASP.NET, you know, web forms, and MVC, and uh, .NET Core, all the way to latest and greatest in Blazor. And then I take over for mobile and desktop, which is, you know, .NET MAUI and Xamarin, and then all of your desktop technologies like WinUI, WPF, WinForms, and more. Uh, that's what I will unpack. So two uh, two hours, and that's what we are doing uh, throughout the day today. All right, and you know while we talk about .NET, uh, it's just a quick thing to mention here. We are you know sitting uh, pretty well here. Uh, we have a few different iterations of .NET. We have framework, we have you know core, and uh, right now we are at .NET six, and that is production ready. Uh, it is truly a unified uh, ecosystem that we're sitting on with the tools of our trade and the type of platforms we can reach from .NET. It is really great. And um, .NET is actually uh, about to celebrate 20 years uh, this February. So uh, folks at Microsoft are getting ready. You know, and, and some of us uh, who are a little older, like Ed and me, we have kind of seen it from its infancy. So Ed, what are your feelings on mm -hmm. .NET today? .NET, I'm only one year older than .NET, so it's <laughs> uh, it's been exciting to see uh, .NET throughout my entire lifetime here. But um, it, it's really awesome to see this, uh, this slide that you have up, Sam, because we have at Progress tools that fit almost every one of those icons on the screen. 
including Visual Studio, Visual Studio Code, uh, Unity, and Xamarin, and Desktop, and Web, and you name it. Uh, we plug in all over the place here. And it's just really awesome to be part of all that. Yeah, yeah, well said. So, I mean, as you're going to see today with web, mobile, and desktop, like whatever .NET you're working on, be it framework, be it uh, .NET Core, or be it .NET 6 and 5, we are there to help you. Like our UI uh, doesn't get in the way. You can work with whatever .NETs you're working with. But uh, it's it's a kind of a good milestone for .NET uh, to be in. Now, uh, moving a little forward and looking ahead at tomorrow, uh, I'm going to be joined by uh, a few more amazing folks, and we're going to talk about all things reporting. We kind of split this off because it's just too much to cover in a single webinar. We have too much goodness going on uh, across reporting, our testing solutions, and Fiddler. Everybody uses Fiddler uh, and you know mocking and unit testing. So we have a whole separate day just to cover all things productivity. So that's coming up tomorrow, 11 to 1 p.m. Uh, Eastern. Uh, so we hope uh, many of you will come and join us for that. All right. So. Diving into uh, what this release is, uh, the release bits are out um, as of like 10 days back. So all of your Telerik and the UI and everything we talk about today are out there. Uh, if you have to you know, run for a meeting or if your connection drops, uh, don't worry, we are recording this and this will go up on YouTube as soon as possible. Uh, like I said, this is also your chance to ask us questions. There is a Q&A panel in the webinar uh, window, uh, or if you are on the socials uh, on Twitter, uh, ask us a question with the hashtag #HeyTelerik. that way we are leaving a breadcrumb trail and we can get back to you uh, throughout today. All yes, right, Sam, and like all of those, yes. uh, before you change slides there, all of the videos that we do on Twitch yes. are also recast on YouTube. So you can find those um, at your convenience. So you don't have to watch them live if you you know can't jump on Twitch. Maybe it's not allowed on your company firewall, whatever. You can jump on YouTube later and check out all the videos that we recorded there. Absolutely, and it's it's very real. We, uh, you know, you see some of the you know developer pains sometimes that we uh, mm -hmm. uh, dive into when we are looking at leading edge technologies and frameworks. But it's all fun. It's how we move uh, move forward. All right, now. Like I said, there are a lot of different products we're going to talk about at a meet today uh, across web, mobile, and desktop. Uh, maybe you're not using all of them, but maybe if you are using Telerik DevCraft, uh, I mean, first up, thank you for using our stuff. If you're new to the family, welcome. Uh, hopefully, you see all the different things we do to enable developers to be better. Uh, but if you are caring about specific products, like what's new in just Blazor, what's new in just uh, Xamarin, then uh, the one place to go to is blogs. So every product team takes the time to write it up, uh, and there are detailed release uh, posts, uh, so you know you know exactly what you're diving into. And like I said, everything is out. So uh, however you get our stuff, be it through the downloads uh, section on Telerik.com, be it through Nougat packages, be it through NPM if you're using Kendo UI, or you know the control panel, or just straight up Nougat in your project, you should see those notifications that you have new bits out. Uh, so go get them. That's how you can see a lot of things that uh, we can talk about today. All right, and you know we are all developers. We are by developers for developers, and we genuinely care about your experience. So uh, tell us uh, how you are doing. Uh, do not struggle. We are here to help uh, with docs, with lots and lots of demos that we can talk about today. And anything like if you have a burning desire to see a certain component in one of our suites, Tell us about it. That's feedback.tillery.com, right? So we are always listening. And on that point, on you know how we are listening and then how you are learning, uh, let's keep this a little interactive. Let's do a quick poll, uh, kind of as we start uh, our you know discussions. So what kind of content uh, do you prefer when seeking technical instruction or problem resolution? You know, be it with our stuff or you know, be it with like uh, any generic technologies that you're dealing with when you have problems. Where are you going? Are you looking at, uh, or you know, how are you learning? Every developer is different. You know, a lot of us learn from videos, a lot of us learn from articles, a lot of us learn by actually doing stuff, right? So, um, you know, on the front of us trying to help and give you all the different ways in which you want to use our stuff, what do you find uh, most beneficial? And um, Ed, let me ask you while we have the poll up, uh, what's your take these days? Um, I, I really like uh, what we've been doing on Twitch and seeing yeah. uh, some of the live uh, troubleshooting of things, uh, yeah. but I, I don't know if that kind of fits where the poll's going here. So uh, if we're looking for technical instruction, I, I try to uh, go towards video myself um, or, or demos. 
Yeah, it is a mixed bag. And a good thing that we actually have multiple uh, you know, uh, choices. So it's a mixed bag. Like a lot of folks like the demos and samples because it's real code that's out there probably in the app stores or you know, for you to play around with. So that's good to know that you like the demos and samples, technical step-by-step -step mm -hmm. articles. So it's a mixed bag and that's kind of what we expect. So and we, we have know. a lot of offerings in this space too. So uh, this poll is going to be really helpful in uh, making sure that we're putting uh, the right efforts in the right buckets, but we have uh, something called the uh, Telerik REPL that we'll talk about today that'll help with those demos and samples that just pulled really high. So I'm excited about that. Yeah. Cool. All right. So uh, let's, uh, if I can find my mouse, let's go into, uh, hold on. Uh, and I lost my mouse. There you go. All right. Let's talk about web. Uh, you know, uh, that's how kind of how we always start. Ten minutes in. Uh, let's talk about all things web. And Ed, I'm ready to give you the controls whenever you're ready. Okay, I'm all set, Sam. All right, let's find you. And here you go. All right. So we're going to talk about all things web. And when I mean all things web, I mean all things web for .NET. Uh, we did have a webinar yesterday on all of our Kendo UI stuff. So if you're doing React, Angular, Vue, uh, jQuery, any of the JavaScript ecosystem stuff, you're going to want to check out that uh, webinar on our YouTube channel. Today, we're going to talk about all the .NET goodies uh, for the web. Um, so we have Telerik UI for Ajax, uh, also known as Web Forms. I'm going to talk about the Telerik REPL, and we'll see some demos for both the Telerik UI for ASP.NET Core and, and Blazor using the Telerik REPL today. Um, and then we have lots of release information for uh, ASP.NET Core, MVC, um, just regular MVC as well. I kind of tie those together. They're usually pretty much in lockstep, except for the uh, fact that we have some tag helpers for ASP.NET Core. Uh, Telerik UI for Blazor, we've got lots of new goodies for you to use, uh, including new map components. So let's jump in and talk about. Uh, what exactly we have in this release for Ajax. We'll get started with Web Forms first. Um, it's the uh, one of the products that's been around the longest. Uh, we were just talking about how um, .NET's been around for 20 years. Uh, this product's been around for pretty close to that. It's um, It's been there since the very beginning of my web development career. So uh, we're still adding new things to this platform. We have a brand new split button uh, and a drag and drop manager, which is really cool. Uh, we'll show a quick demo of that on our, our demos pages. Uh, we're working on zero day support for web live preview for UI for ASP.NET Ajax. And this is like the new generation of the uh, web forms editor that you can edit in real time, but it's using the browser instead of a proprietary like panel within Visual Studio. So that's really cool. We're looking forward to that. Um, we did a demo of that a couple webinars back. Um, we also have support for Visual Studio 2022 and a new report integration demo as well. So let's jump out to the web for a second and take a look at what's new with Ajax. So if you go to demos.telerk.com and you navigate to the Ajax page, this is what you'll see. And when we release new things, you'll see these little green icons popping up here, letting you know that we've added something new to the components. Uh, let's take a quick look at the split button. Uh, this is a really handy UI component that gives you a button with uh, kind of a little sub menu that comes up underneath. So you can uh, do things like this, transferring things left and right. Um, also supports accessibility, right to left support, and all of that sort of thing. Um, jump back to the main page here again, we've got that drag and drop manager. So you can define areas within your application and allow drag and drop, and you have full control over how you want that to work and uh, what type of uh, arguments are passed and that sort of thing. Um, you can have different types of uh, containers and uh, set boundaries for where those items can be dragged and dropped to. It's, it's a nice configurable uh, set up here, we can expand where this drag and drop can take place. And um, we can you can also define different areas uh, that you can drop to and from. 
And uh, this is a, you know, this is a really handy UI uh, integration that you can use for your applications. Love it. Lots of new, no, lots of uh, nice new things coming for uh, web forms. Uh, we also have a new demo to show our integration with um, our uh, reporting. Uh, so Telerik reporting, uh, it's a very popular uh, part of our DevCraft uh, ecosystem here. And we have integration for uh, MVC and Blazor. And uh, we also have integration here in web forms. So you can see uh, we've got a grid report uh, it has a Telerik uh, UI for uh, Ajax grid on one page, and then we have our integration with our um, uh, reporting, uh, Telerik reporting on the other tab here. So we can see the information that's on the grid um, in kind of a drill down view within the report. So those things can coexist uh, with each other on the same um, web form page. It's cool stuff there. All right, so let's move on and talk a little bit about Telerik REPL for ASP.NET Core in Blazor. Uh, so this is a really exciting tool that we uh, released um, in between our, our major releases this year, uh, and we're continuing to improve on this online experience where you have no install, no login. Just go to the website, um, and I'll give you the, the links here at the bottom. It's uh, blazerrepl.telerik.com or netcorerepl.telerik.com. Just uh, jump in. You don't have to log in or anything. Let, right there live in the browser, you can work on samples for ASP.NET Core or Blazor. So you can write, run, save those things, and then share them uh, on the web. This is super handy if you're trying to um, solve problems with a coworker or a friend on the internet. Um, you can share a sample of something that uh, you know you need help with or just want to share something really cool that you built. Um, we'll do a little bit of that uh, today in the webinar. Uh, you can also embed these things in your uh, blog posts. So if you have a blog, you're writing about a particular Blazor or ASP.NET Core subject, you can drop a demo right into your blog post and embed that in the page. Um, and then you also get the ability to use the Telerik UIs in those um, Blazor REPL and Telerik REPL experiences as well. So if you want to try out any of the components, see how they work, uh, fiddle with them, you can try them out right there. And uh, you can also live change the themes and see how the different themes look within the components. So we're going to use that today to do some of our, our demos for uh, ASP.NET Core and Blazor. Uh, Telerik UI for MVC and Core. Got a lot of new components here um, and a lot of nice upgrades. So we have a brand new avatar component. Um, we'll show a demo of that in just a second. We have a new pivot grid as well. Uh, so if you're doing any of those finance apps, uh, I know writing a pivot grid is just insanely hard to do. Um, I've done I've done this a long time ago. One of the first projects I worked on, we had to write a pivot grid in web forms. Uh, so yeah, I, I feel the pain of the team that had to do <laughs> this pivot grid for ASP.NET Core and MVC, but now you don't have to. It's right there in the library. Uh, we also have support for .NET 6 in Visual Studio 2022, and I'll show you that in just a moment as well. Um, and then we have UI kits for Figma. So if you're working with a design team, uh, they can use the free uh, Figma kits to um, create your own uh, themes and design language and uh, pass that off to the developers to integrate very easily with our components. Uh, we have lots of updates as well as uh, not just new items, but updated items. Uh, the data grid has a new drag and drop uh, feature. So you can drag and sort um, items within data grids. You can drag and drop from one data grid to another. Um, we, we have all sorts of uh, new features for the data grid. You should jump on the demos website and check all of those out. Uh, we have updates for the editor. 
Um, we have an undo and redo function in the editor now. So this is super handy. Uh, I know because I make a lot of mistakes when I'm writing. So this is probably one of the, uh, the more popular features that people ask for, including myself. Um, we have a brand new color picker as well, or updated color picker. Uh, so new features there, uh, panel bar component rendering has been improved. Uh, we've got some improvements in our demos that I'll show you and our uh, Visual Studio and Visual Studio code extensions are available for ASP.NET Core. So let's check out some demos. Uh, let's jump over to demos.telerk.com again. And once again, you can see the new items, but there's a lot of updated items in here. You can see those updates are all over the place. So why is that? Well, I talked about this a little bit. Um, we have uh, this new appearance feature that was an update in this release, and you'll see this in Blazor as well. And what you can do here is you can easily modify the appearance of uh, elements in our uh, Teller components. And this is super handy if you have a, a design language that you're looking to uh, use with your um, components. You want this to look like your brand. You want the colors to be right, the shape of the buttons to be perfect. And you can do that very easily now through code. So if I wanted to change this button and uh, kind of make it a big square button, I can easily do that through some properties. And uh, I can also make that larger. We can change the color here and uh, we'll set this to a full border radius. Now I've got a nice circle button. And uh, you can totally customize uh, the way this looks. I also said there were improvements with the demos. Um, you'll, you'll notice we have buttons here now for the client side API and the server side API. This is for our uh, ASP.NET Core and MVC uh, demos. So there is a, a client side uh, JavaScript API and a server side uh, Razor HTML helper and um, uh, tag helper APIs here. So you'll be able to easily jump to those. Um, and we also have a feature I talked about called the Telerik REPL. You can use the Telerik REPL directly, but you can also jump into demos by clicking the button here in demos and say, edit in Telerik REPL. And now I have that same demo running in the browser, but in here I can edit this demo live and uh, make changes to it uh, right here in the browser. And after that, I can share that with, um, with my social media uh, networks here. I can post it on Twitter, share it with my friends, uh, put that in an email, share it with coworkers, et cetera. So uh, super handy uh, feature there if you wanna just jump right in and start coding on one of the demos that you see um, in the demos.teller.com pages. So we'll jump back say, here again. Ed, mm -hmm. I got to say, this is so nice, you know, and especially coming from, uh, you know, the mobile or desktop developers uh, perspective, this is just so easy. Like you can just like, you know, look at a demo and just like start uh, changing things right away. You don't need like no drama to kind of get started uh, while we have to get a lot of bits and pieces going. Absolutely. Um, you know, just being able to do this at a click of a button is so nice. So I just jumped over to avatars. This is the new avatar component. Um, I'll try to zoom in a little bit because avatars are tiny. So make sure we can see really good. Uh, the avatar part of this is the little circle with the pictures or the um, abbreviated text here. So you see these a lot in applications. Um, Sam, you probably see this a lot on mobile apps as well. Uh, where you sign in or maybe you have an email app or something that has coworker information, contacts, et cetera. Uh, you can easily create these nice little round um, kind of uh, avatar pills and uh, they're super com um, configurable too. So if we go into our edit in Telerik REPL again, uh, we'll run this. You can see we have that same mechanic here where we have properties that we can just change. So on this first avatar up here, if I wanted to change this to um, a more squared off uh, looking um, 
uh, instead of rounded, completely, um, I could say large, and hit run here, and notice that it changed from a circle, comparing it to the one below, to a nice rounded edge uh, kind of um, avatar. I really like those myself. I I'd kind of fall back to that as one of my go-tos when I'm designing an application. Um, the rounded ones look nice too, but I think these, they end up cutting off a little bit less of the picture. So that's kind of my, my go-to. So that one's uh, rounded large, and then you can change the colors of these as well. So I think uh, info is uh, another one of the colors that you can use here. There we go. Now it's a nice blue color. It's pulling those theme colors uh, in from the theme of the application. So uh, you can customize that as well through the theming aspect of the app. As a matter of fact, uh, we can look at that through, uh, this is again, the Telerik REPL for ASP.NET Core. We're currently using the default theme. So if we were to change some themes up here, see if we can drop that over to a dark theme, uh, we can instantly see what that would look like with the uh, dark theme applied uh, to those Telerik components. So that's, uh, that is, is pretty amazing. I love the fact that we can do all of this live in the browser um, and see it, see the changes just instantly happen. And you can also toggle those themes if you don't want to jump all the way over to the Blazor REPL or the Telerik REPL. Uh, you can change those themes right here as well. So we do have, um, and I'm going to have a little bit of a demo fail, I think, but uh, we, we can change over to Bootstrap. Let's see if we can get, uh, I can't get my, my theme changer working here. That one changed. It didn't like the dark theme for some reason, but we have engineers in the chat room that'll look into that for me. So uh, we, we can change the themes here uh, live in um, the uh, demos pages as well. So we, we're really big on theming. Um, you know, we've expanded uh, the capabilities with the, the Figma kits, uh, and then we have lots of theming uh, properties now in all of the components. All the ones that you see updated, uh, it's probably because there was uh, a new appearance uh, set of properties uh, added to that. And it looks like my theme is now stuck on dark theme. I'll try to change that one back. So we've got our appearance themes now. Uh, that was a big one. Uh, and then, of course, the pivot grid, the brand new pivot grid. Um, if, if you're working on those, you know, hardcore finance applications. Uh, this is something you're going to want to check out. Uh, it's, you know, it, it's a very complex UI to build, uh, and it has a lot of moving pieces to it. So uh, you don't have to build all of these things yourself. Um, so jump in to demos.teller.com and give that one a look as well. Uh, we are pretty, you know, there's a lot of things to go through on these components, and we we have a pretty short uh, time frame to do it. So I'm going to go ahead and move on uh, to one of the things I'm sure a lot of folks are excited in here to see, and that is Blazor. So let's talk about Telerik UI for Blazor for a minute. We've got a lot of new components here. It's uh, the younger framework of uh, the ones that we just mentioned, you know, with Telerik UI for Ajax being almost 20 years old. Um, Telerik UI for MVC and Core has uh, been around for uh, almost a decade now. So Blazor, the, the baby of the bunch, is getting a lot of attention uh, because it's got to catch up to its, its older siblings here. So we've got uh, Telerik UI for Blazor with a brand new map component. Uh, three different color pickers. We we have three different styles of color picker, uh, a gradient picker, and a flat color picker. A file select. I'm going to show you a demo of the file select. Uh, the file select, uh, there's um, two different aspects of selecting files in Blazor. We'll talk about those, but the fly, file select is brand new. Uh, we have, again, those same theme improvements. I'll show some more demos of that. Uh, we have a brand new QR code component. Uh, we showed off the uh, the um, barcode last uh, release. We got the QR code for this release. Uh, the heat map component. So we saw the heat map component in MVC last release. Now we've got it in Blazor this release. So lots of new components, uh, lots of updates. Um, we've got updates on the grid and the tree list components. 
uh, some export to Excel customization, uh, the ability to include all pages on Excel export with the on read function, um, enhanced validation and editing, uh, new APIs for auto sizing columns based on their content. Uh, the search box has a uh, cancel icon uh, and the escape key will now clear that search box. So that's more intuitive. Um, and the search box uh, can uh, infer its search criteria from the grid state as well. So lots of improvements there. Um, Telerik UI for Blazor continues getting updates with other components as well. That was just uh, the grid and the tree list I mentioned before. We have date input components. Uh, all of those received uh, format placeholders. Uh, Tabstrip has a persistent tab content property now. Uh, so the way that Blazor uh, renders things sometimes, it will destroy content if it's hiding it. Uh, so now you can toggle um, a setting to make sure that it persists that content so it doesn't have to be reloaded or repainted. Uh, the input components, so I put input star here, so all of the input components have a validate on uh, property now that lets you decide when validation should happen. So this gives you more fine-grained control over when exactly validation is occurring. Does it occur on change, on blur? Um, uh, on uh, on input. Uh, so if you're, for, for example, typing in an email uh, validation box, um, does it change that validation as you type or does it wait for you to stop typing and tab to the next component? You can control that uh, on a granular scale now. Um, there's new APIs for our upload component. Uh, the editor has, uh, editor component has a media uh, aspect to it, so you can embed videos, iframes, uh, those sort of things right inside of your documents. And of course, Visual Studio and Visual Studio Code extensions. And that's not all. <laughs> A lot of customers were asking for the product source code, and uh, we had to make sure that we did this the right way and got this into people's hands. Um, and uh, had our, our build system and everything set up to uh, make sure this is a seamless process. Uh, so now that is available and our product source code is uh, available through your account in your download section. So I'm sure that many customers who are asking for this are very happy to hear that they have access to this. All right. Um, I do want to mention before we move on to demos, that in this release 3.0 of Telerik UI for Blazor, there were some breaking changes. So before you rush out and upgrade, make sure you go to docs.telerik.com and select upgrade from the menu and review those breaking changes. Um, there may be some things that will affect your application. So just be careful there. Um, we do have uh, guides as to how to fix uh, things that we have changed. Uh, we've gone, you know, we have a pretty good track record here of not breaking things, and we've tried uh, really hard to uh, not make any kind of major changes that would do this sort of thing, but uh, at some point you have to kind of pave the way for the future, and uh, in this release we have some breaking changes for you to look at. So let's take a look at some demos. I have some fun demos to, to do here, and uh, we should have plenty of time, Sam, for me to get back to you so um, well, Ed, um before you jump into demos can we do a couple of mm -hmm. questions here uh, oh, absolutely from the chat room, we have questions chat room here because uh, they, they relate to kind of a REPL which is true for Blazor and you know um, uh, regular uh, document core apps so uh, mm -hmm. Eugene if I'm saying your name right uh, was wondering you know we have the Telerik SAS theme builder which is where you can start with a theme and you get to customize things uh, to your heart's content. You get to download, uh, and you, then you get mm -hmm. to upload it. So the question was, uh, is there a way to you know, customize a theme and then bring it over to REPL? And this may have already been answered in the chat room, but I'm just wondering if you know. Um, I don't know if you can customize the theme and bring it into Blazor REPL specifically. Um, you, it's something uh, maybe, maybe one of our engineers can validate for me as I think through this. But if we go to Blazor REPL, 
uh, you can open up a tab here and add a static asset. Mm -hmm. um, I, however, I don't know if it will override our theme asset manager. That's that's the question that I would need our engineers to ask without having to uh, try this and uh, um, check for myself. Yeah, so no so we'll, we'll I think you theme. could through this. Yeah. You can. Um, I'll just say this: you can, in fact, upload your own CSS to the Blazor REPL using the Static Asset Manager. Um, you have to host it somewhere like uh, a GitHub or something like that and just bring it in um, through the Static Asset Manager. You can also add JavaScript files here too. Um, so I'm kind of partially answering that question. You may be able to bring in a Telerik Blazor CSS file and it may override these. I am not 100% sure um, yeah. no, makes sense. how that gets injected and, you know, order of operation matters there. So mm -hmm. uh, that's a great question though. Yeah. Um, so Chris and a few others in the chat room are kind of appreciating what and the REPL is. And I mean, I, I love it for, you know, the ease of getting started. Uh, and mm -hmm. then the obvious segue, and this is good feedback, is like, could we use, use utilize it to, you know, do some troubleshooting with our support teams? And, you know, uh, I'm sure our engineers are looking at this. There might be some like legalities of like how we handle things, but uh, that's great feedback, and we will definitely uh, look into it. Um, do you know? Uh, Emmanuel was asking, do you know if you could do drag and drop uh, in the maps in Blazor? Drag and drops in the maps in Blazor. Uh, I don't believe drag and drop is a, an API yet. Um, I know you can drag the map itself around to navigate, but I don't think you can drag, say, a pin onto the map. Um, yeah, it is, it is the same way with, you know, some of the desktop stuff that we'll look at because it, it depends on the underlying, you know, service that you're using and um, you have to bring in the things that are pertinent for the layers of, of the map. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I don't believe that is possible. Um, just for the mere fact that when you drag on the map surface, you actually drag the map itself. Um, you could add a secondary UI to add things to the map, but as far as dragging them around the surface, I don't believe that you can do that. Yeah. All right, good. we got a few more questions, but why don't you go and show off your demos first? All right, sounds good, Sam. Uh, so let's uh, first back up to the homepage here. So if we, again, demos.telerk.com, just select Blazor from that menu. We'll get you right here. Uh, you'll see we have uh, some sample applications up top. Uh, we also have all of our components down here. Um, all the updates, once again, we have all of these updates for that appearance uh, uh, feature that we added. So if we go to the appearance tab here, and I'll do a, a bigger demo of this in just a few minutes, uh, where you can change the style of the button um, and some other uh, inputs as well. You can see all of these updates um, that are in here. Uh, we also have, let's go back again, uh, we have the brand new file select component. Some of the items don't have new on them because they were released uh, mid-release. Um, mid so we, we do have releases between our major releases. So like our QR code, for example, doesn't have this new thing next to it because it was in a, um, a minor release that we uh, dropped earlier. But we do have the QR code. Um, I know, I know, Sam, you were a little jealous of this one. Uh, we've got the uh, custom image that can be embedded in our QR codes um, on the web. This wasn't so much a thing on mobile, you said, uh, but it's um, it's something yeah. that we're we have capabilities for here on the web. If you just drop in an image URL here into the uh, the QR code overlay settings, um, you can actually embed your own custom logo. Uh, right there inside of that QR code. So you can, you know, help, help brand that thing that you're making uh, for your uh, your company. I think that's really cool. It is nice, but uh, how about I show you things that you can't do for web when I get the message? <laughs> you'll, you'll have your turn. You'll have right. your turn, Sam. <laughs> uh, we have the, um, the color pickers as well. These are all new and updated. Uh, we, there's, various ones for different things that you might want to do with your application. 
So we have um, kind of the full experienced color picker here where you can drag throughout um, the entire color wheel and uh, pick, you know, different hue, saturation, et cetera. Uh, we have a flat color picker. Um, trying to, there we go. So you've got this, this view that you can use here as well. Um, we also have the gradient color picker. So that you can fine tune these color pickers uh, based on what exactly you're trying to choose colors for in your application. I, I remember using these on some uh, some of my apps for doing um, reporting. Uh, so we'd have, you know, if it's if there's some criteria met, what color do you want that line item to be? So you'd go in here and select your colors and uh, apply those to your report, that type of thing. They're, they're super handy for all sorts of different scenarios. Um, let's try to back up one more time here. Uh, the file select component. I'm gonna do a deeper dive demo on this one because I think this is a really cool thing that Blazor is capable of doing. So with Blazor, let's talk a little bit about um, file upload and file select. So if I, Sam, if I had a file upload component, I would intend to take a file, send it to the server, do some server side processing on it, right? Uh, with the file select component, I might wanna take a file, not upload it to the web because I have C Sharp right in the browser, right? So I might not need to have a server process bits of that file. I might wanna go ahead and do something with that file right live in the browser. So here's an example that I, I just kind of whipped up in uh, Telerik REPL for Blazor, uh, just a couple minutes. And uh, the first thing I did is I dropped our file select component on the page. And uh, let me try to zoom in as well here, because I know this is probably, is it gonna let me zoom? It's not letting me zoom, Sam. There we go. Make sure it's That's nice right. and big here. Um, I dropped in a file select component. I dropped in a Telerik editor. And what I want to do is upload a markdown file and then edit that file in the Telerik editor. So what I what I have here is an on select function and an on remove function. We're going to tie into those. I only want one file and I want to make sure that my extensions are narrowed down to and we'll, we'll zoom over here a little bit. These are just allowing markdown files only. So I've got this kind of validating the file type that comes in. When I call on select, I'm going to get the file opened uh, directly in my Blazor component here. So I'm gonna take the arguments from the on select. It's gonna give me my file. I'm gonna set up a byte array and I'm gonna go ahead and read that byte array using file stream read async, pull in all those uh, bytes into that byte array, and then I'm gonna turn it into a string using get string, and I'm gonna take that result and pass it to something called markdig. And I'm gonna say markdown to HTML, and I'm gonna build the HTML file right here in the browser using uh, a NuGet package. I pulled that into my, my REPL here. Uh, so I have markdig right here. So I can use that reference and call markdown to HTML. So let's go ahead and run this. So it's going to compile it, run it right in the browser. Again, I, know I didn't have to install an IDE here. I didn't have to download Telerik UI for Blazor. I didn't have to do anything. Just visit blazorrepl.telerik.com and start working. So now if I select a file, and I've got uh, a markdown demo file here with lots of different markdown in it. As soon as I click that, that file upload, or not even an upload, the file select, um, it read that file parsed it into HTML and spit it into a Telerik editor. So now I can just continue nice. editing this file right here. Yeah. So, you know, change the heading, save that out to a database, do whatever I'd like to do with it. Um, yeah, there's just a few it's, lines of code here. It's very meta. Yeah, and and to think like uh, the, the the engineering behind this, like you're you're pulling in NuGet packages, and these are you know .NET libraries that you're compiling and doing it all in browser. Mm -hmm. This is impressive. 
very impressive. Uh, it's a really cool tool. Um, and uh, the the engineers behind it are here uh, in chat with us. Um, just fantastic uh, thing that, that they've created here. So very, very cool. And uh, the, the on remove is very simple here too. So my file select has an on remove method. If I do that on remove method, it's going to give me that array of arguments again. I don't even really need that here. I'm just going to call this the field that's holding the, the markdown and clear it. And then it goes back to the screen that says load a markdown file. And then, of course, if I didn't select a markdown file, let's say I grabbed a JPEG. Uh, it's this file type not allowed. It looks like I need some validation logic inside of the component. It did actually go ahead and render it anyway. Um, but uh, it does do some checking there to let you know that it's the wrong type. Looks like I have some more work to do on that. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and cancel that demo out and go on to the next one. I said I would get a little bit more into the customization features here um, of the uh, uh, the appearance properties. So if uh, if we scroll down a little bit here, and I'll zoom back in again. So we can see the code really good. Um, I have a Telerik button here. And the Telerik button, we have these new properties. We have fill mode, rounded, shape, size, and theme color. And again, these are all style properties that I can use uh, to modify how I would like uh, these buttons and other um, components to look. So we, we have input components that uh, have these same properties on them. I just happen to pick the button again because it's a nice visual. But if we uh, kind of toggle these around a little bit, you can see I can make a nice round button here. Um, we can select some colors. And uh, if I wanted to, and I like this feature. I like it, this outline mode. This is really cool. If you have um, something you want to kind of de-emphasize in your UI, uh, so, for example, my submit button might be um, might be solid and have a primary color, but my cancel button that I want to de-emphasize a little bit, um, I might choose uh, outline and maybe a different color, and it, it kind of de-emphasizes that a bit. I think that's really cool that you can just do that without having to write a bunch of CSS to do it. Now, if you are a CSS guru, Sam, you know some of those folks, don't you? Yes, I do, and I'm jealous. <laughs> you know some CSS people. We're, we're you know pretty handy with our CSS. Uh, what if I want to customize this, right? So if I look at what's going on in this demo, um, I've got some uh, properties here for the fill mode, and they're set to some constants. Uh, so that by default, we've got, um, these are just generating strings, basically. These are public static strings that we offer to make things kind of a convenience. So we have uh, button fill mode solid, um, and then these are put into an array of, you know, of um, options here for this nice UI up here. I'm gonna go ahead and add a custom option. Let's go ahead and add a custom option. We'll go ahead and run that, and you'll see the custom option drop in on the uh, the color. So I've got custom. When I click it, notice I've got this nice blue color here. Well, that's because I added a CSS class, uh, and the way this works is I have the namespace K. Uh, this comes from our Kendo uh, product line. Um, all of our themes are built uh, from that same Kendo. Um, uh, theme uh, repo. So you're going to get that K namespace. It is a button, and we're targeting the solid property of that button. And I'm tacking on that custom string that I added there. I can name that whatever I'd like. I just chose custom to make it easy. And uh, now I have properties that I combine to. And this drop down here gets converted to the string custom, and the component generates the class here and the class gets applied to my button. So I can write some CSS and then tell our developer team to go ahead and set their properties to whatever this custom name is. 
and then they have the custom look and feel to that button. It's pretty cool. I like it. I like the customization features. I love making uh, the web look the way you know I want for my application. Uh, that's that's one of the things that drew me to web development is it's so flexible and creative. Uh, one more uh, demo here. We're going to look at the new map component. There's a lot of these demos up on demos.telerk.com, by the way. I just have one that uh, Chris from our dev team built. Um, he's also uh, one of the devs behind the Blazor REPL. Um, he sent me this. I thought this was really cool. Uh, I won't go into all the code for it, but we have basically a Telerik map, and it's calling some HT, uh, HTTP uh, endpoints that have open health information. So we've got uh, the COVID cases. I know COVID's a little touchy subject, but uh, you, you didn't, you didn't like to go there. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like to go there, but it, it's it's a nice way to show uh, something that's topical. Um, and uh, if you click on these items, you can see it's drilling into that data that is that is being represented by those bubbles. So um, I thought this was a really cool demo. He was sharing it with me on uh, on Teams yesterday, and I was like, "That's that's cool. Let's show that uh, in the uh, webinar." I think that's very uh, you know, it's a real world use case, Sam. Um, again, not not the topic I love to talk about, but it's a real world use case people can relate to these days. So I thought it was worth showing. It's really neat. Um, one last one, we had a question that came in before the webinar that I wanted to hopefully address. Uh, somebody was asking about, do we have a, um, a uh, hamburger menu that has a hierarchical feature to it? Uh, the there is a demo here on demos.teller.com of our drawer component, which can do a, um, a hamburger navigation style menu. Um, while it doesn't have hierarchy built directly in, you can add it, and it is a demo that you can just jump off of. Um, and th it takes a little customization with a template, but you can drop in a template uh, with a set of on ordered lists, you can also put other components in here as well. Um, and uh, you can create a navigation using uh, just a, a, a basic template with some for each loops inside of it. Um, the, the demos here, so you can either just jump right into Teller uh, REPL and kind of edit that and um, see if it's going to fit your needs. Uh, and if it does, you can pull it into Visual Studio and uh, you know further enhance that, and add it to your application. We also have um, more responsive menu components coming in our roadmap. We are currently working on them. Uh, we've we've already received feedback on these things, uh, so it looks like uh, we have a, a time frame of around June uh, that you may see those uh, components. Um, so. Hopefully this answers that question. If not, we have your email uh, and we will stay in contact with you uh, about the question. Hey, Ed. Right. One so, last, uh, uh, oh, yeah, go well, ahead with some uh, questions, Sam. I've got going to quick respond demos. to a few things in the chat room. Um, first up, <laughs> Marianne uh, is kind of congratulating you that you're, uh, you, without your validations, you were able to load a JPEG in a you know, markdown editor and things didn't just <laughs> burn and crash so that's nice uh, and it uh, looks like folks are you know you know holding their breath for uh, my section which is desktop and mobile so Elaine was asking about questions about WPF or when when UI I would love to get to that Elaine uh, but Elaine also asked a question about uh, if I can find it um, and I'm not very good with you know uh, the different like date formats but the nullable, nullable dates you know the whole nullable thing in C sharp uh, 10 in particular, uh, the date time pickers, do you know how they uh, handle that? Off the top of my head, I can't remember how nullable date times would work. All right. Uh, uh, no that, that's something I would, I would have to, yeah. yeah. Unfortunately, I haven't messed around with that. And I think it would depend a little bit on the scenario you're using it into. Like, what do you want your app to do if it is a null date? Um, right. I believe they, that the nullables do work with the components, but I don't know the exact, you know, I think they just represent it as is. 
Yeah, and it may have already been been answered by our engineers here. Uh, you know, folks, uh, Eugene uh, from the past was still uh, wondering if you know when you do theme builder and you customize, like you get a JSON file, which is where you can like take it from where you left off in VS Code or theme builder. It would be nice if uh, kind of Repl could pick it up, but like you said, it, the ordering of things uh, really matters here. Um, yeah, that that may be a possibility. I just haven't tried it. Yeah. And, and no worries there, we will kind of get back to you, Eugene. Uh, Johan, if I'm saying that right, and a few others were uh, asking about the map component and kind of what services uh, we could use. Uh, and again, mm -hmm. off the top, like Ed or me would have to go and look up the docs, but there are, you know, a plentiful number of providers we could use. Um, so There's some on our demo site as well, Sam. So if we go to demos.telric.com, and it's all the way at the bottom in its own little category here, okay. uh, maps. Uh, there is a GeoJSON example, and there is, I think it's the, the tile layer. One of these has a Google API in it, I think. Oh, cool. There you go. Uh, and I'm a big fan of uh, S3 and, and their, you know, uh, ESR, the spatial data. This yeah. is OpenStreet right here. Yeah. This one is using OpenStreet. So, you know, you can plug in your services here um, in there's a couple examples of how to do that. Yeah. All right, Ed, I can give you four or five more minutes before we switch yep. gears. This is switch. real quick. I just want to give a shout out to our um, our Visual Studio and um, Visual Studio Code integration. So uh, we have template wizards for Visual Studio Code and Visual Studio. Um, and there's a couple different things that you can build with these. Uh, so if you go into Visual Studio, you choose blank project. Uh, we have dashboard, a form, a chart, a grid. Uh, the same um, thing is available in Visual Studio, but I think it is an all-encompassing. It has like all four of those in it. Where these you can add them ad hoc. Uh, we also have an admin dashboard template. And if you look when I'm I'm uh, working with this UI here. I've got the ability to change my themes. So you can even go in as far as grabbing different swatches and getting like sub themes. So I could go with a material lime dark theme if I wanted to, and we could go in and build uh, that application out, hit create project. Um, I'm gonna go through all the steps. I just wanna kind of show off what this looks like here today. Uh, same thing in Visual Studio. If I go to create a new project, and I say create a Telerik C-Sharp Blazor application, and we won't even give it a name, we're just gonna pull the UI up. I can grab my target framework. I have .NET in 6 installed on my machine. Maybe I want WebAssembly or server. Uh, these options are also available in the other tool. Um, I'm gonna grab a WebAssembly. I might want a dashboard or an admin app. And then if we hit next, uh, we'll have the ability here again to grab those themes and sub themes uh, right in the editor. Hit finish, it's gonna scaffold out a project. If you wanna see what those look like, um, if you go to demos.telerik.com, again, that's for Telerik UI for Blazor and we have them for ASP.NET Core. If we look at ASP.NET Core and MVC, uh, this is the admin demo that your scaffolding tool will build. So you'll get this uh, page here. So if you build out that admin template, uh, you get uh, this, this nice dashboard that you can start building an app from. So those are built in. Uh, one of the other things that you can do here, uh, let me see if I can just get a, uh, any project I have will do. Uh, we'll pull this guy up. I think this is a .NET project. Uh, and I need a razor file. Give me a razor file. Uh, client, uh, pages, um, this authentication view will do the trick. So I've got this authentication view that I built. Maybe I wanna share this with some friends on the internet. Maybe somebody's helping me troubleshoot something that's wrong with it. I can highlight this and hit share on Telerik, REPL for Blazor, click a button, and there it is in the browser, loading into Telerik REPL for Blazor. Um, probably not runnable, or at this point because I don't have all of the dependencies and it's doing some authentication stuff, but uh, you get the idea. If I have a component or something that I'm building and I wanna share it, um, I can just easily highlight it, share it, 
using the uh, the menu, and then I can just click share from up here and send that to a coworker, friend, etc., to help me uh, fix whatever is going on with that. Or maybe I just had something I built that's cool and I want to share that with the world. Um, you get the idea. It's right there with a simple uh, click of the button. You could do that in Visual Studio as well if you have the plugins installed for um, your product. And that's all I've got, Sam. I'm going to give it over to you. We're perfectly well, said, on the uh, dot well I mean, b before you before you switch, uh, you know, uh, mm -hmm. I, I like the VS Code, uh, you know, extension. I really like, uh, you know, the, the fact that we are throwing a template so we can get started so easily. Uh, I mm -hmm. am on a Mac most of the time for my dev uh, stuff. And on the mobile front, there are some things that are lacking on, on a Mac. So I use VS Code a lot and I'm, uh, you know, glad to see that for Blazor, I, I can just like start from right there. Um, so, and one uh, one quick thing I wanted to read out to you uh, from the chat room, and again, our engineers, our support teams always kind of look into, you know, the issues uh, devs are having, but it's good to, uh, good to get a nice word uh, once in a while. So Shannon, I'm gonna read your comment here. Uh, the new Blazor updates are amazing. Uh, well done, and you know uh, the, there are breaking changes. And you know, as as we all talk about, you know, stuff with uh, you know .dot in Maui with Microsoft. I mean, there are breaking changes uh, uh, in you know desktop and mobile as well. Sometimes you have to kind of break uh, free and and do the things that are right. Uh, it, yes, it does take a little bit of time to unbreak, but they are so worth it every minute of it. So you know, big thank you to all that you do, Ed, and you know the Blazor team uh, that keeps uh, churning out so many updates. Yeah. And again, if you need to look at those breaking changes, they're right there in docs at docs.telerc.com. On the left-hand side, you'll see upgrade. If you select that, their breaking changes are listed for every version. All right. So let's uh, let's switch gears. But I think we might do one quick thing before we switch entirely and dive into my stuff. Let's see if I can uh, show my screen. All right, Ed, um, from this point onwards, you watch uh, the chat room. So we talked about all things Absolutely. web here, folks. The one thing I will mention here, and, and this is something Ed and we, you know, talk about it. We are excited. Uh, you know, somebody uh, from our team is actually, who works on this is actually uh, in the chat room. There is a whole idea of bringing Blazor. You know, Blazor, everything that Ed showed is uh, up and running in a browser. What if you wanted to bring that over uh, to desktop and uh, to mobile? And it doesn't even uh, go with just Blazor. What if you have like Angular, React, or Vue, and other like JavaScript investments? Uh, there are ways right now, you know, with progressive uh, web apps, there are things you can do with Electron, but uh, .NET MAUI is opening up uh, this in a big way for .NET developers, uh, especially if you're doing Blazor, uh, you're running on the same runtime. So this opens up nice possibilities with a nice web view. Uh, so if time permitting, I would like to maybe uh, show you a little bit of this, uh, and I know Ed uh, plays with this as well. Uh, so this is this is exciting. And uh, mm -hmm. on that front, uh, since we talked about so many things, Blazor, uh, and we know a lot of you are doing Blazor. Let's uh, do a quick interactive poll here. Um, if you are working with Blazor right now, uh, hopefully you're happy with stuff on the web, but do you have a need to bring Blazor to desktop? And uh, if so, um, what are you thinking? Um, so could, could Maui help? Are you okay with Electron or, you know, um, do you want to see it just on Windows? Do you want to see it on Mac? And then those kind of things. So uh, if you're happy with Blazor, that's great. And again, this, this is, I think, the reality for, you know, lots of teams where you're not r running just one app, you're maintaining multiple apps, you know, some web, some desktop, and it would be nice if you could share uh, share the love and we could kind of reuse what uh, the web teams are building uh, with Blazor. So yeah, tell us uh, tell us what you think. Uh, going once, going twice, and let's see the results here. Okay, um, you don't have desktop apps. I don't plan to migrate. That's fair. Uh, but you know, uh, this is something we are seeing with a lot of our uh, you know clients where you are writing for web, but all of a sudden your manager or your marketing team comes up to you and say, it would be nice to have this on desktop. So uh, all I'm saying is we we have this on our radar and uh, we are actively thinking about it. And, uh, you know, time permitting, I would like to maybe uh, show you a little bit of what that uh, reality looks like. OK, so uh, let's let's move on. And let's see if the poll would go away. And there you go. We are back. <laughs> 
Okay. And let's see. All right. Let's talk uh, mobile and desktop. And uh, Ed, I appreciate you, uh, you know, ending at the top of the hour. Well done, my friend, because uh, you had a lot to cover. But uh, I have, uh, you know, uh, seven or eight different products here to cover. So thank you for the time. Let's talk about mobile. You know, as much as Ed uh, would like to think the web is ubiquitous, which it is, and, you know, the web works everywhere, but there is a time and a space for native apps because, you know, your, your users demand native apps at times. Your enterprise workflows demand native apps. Uh, so what's the story with mobile and desktop and how can we help? All right, so let's talk about uh, mobile first. You know, uh, we'll, we'll get to Xamarin, which is the present reality uh, that's production ready in just a minute. But um, before we do that, let's talk about Maui because we kind of hinted at this. This is .NET uh, multi-platform app UI. Uh, this is an older slide as of like November. So it says general availability early next year, which is not next next year. It is this year uh, sometime, you know, Q1, end of Q1 or Q2. Uh, so this is cooking and it's been cooking for a while. And it's uh, running on .NET 6. Uh, most of the bits uh, of what .NET MAUI is are actually already out uh, as part of .NET 6. But the tooling is really catching up, uh, especially on Windows and uh, a lot on, on Mac as well. Uh, so they haven't shipped MAUI yet. It's not production ready, but it's enough for you know, people to tinker and, and you know, start seeing the promise of where this might lead. So we are talking about the evolution of what Xamarin Forms is. It is the .NET cross-platform story. Runs so on .NET 6, a single project that serves up you know, multiple platforms, which is nice. And uh, it's iOS and Android, which is what we had anyways with Xamarin Forms, but it's adding desktop, which is uh, kind of a nice story. Uh, Windows, uh, we are going to reach Windows through WinUI, and we're going to talk about WinUI uh, in, a, in a bit, and we're going to reach Mac through what's called Mac Catalyst. You know, for those of you who do iOS development, we're doing things in UI Kit, which is the iOS UI framework. Uh, but when you do Mac development, that's kind of a more niche area. And uh, uh, for that area, Apple is wanting to have your iPad apps run on, uh, you know, the Mac desktop. Uh, so their bridge into uh, AppKit is uh, what's called Mac Catalyst. So that's what uh, you know, um, Dr. Maui is using to reach the desktops, and this has got uh, got some promise. And we are excited about this. Uh, uh, you know, needless to say. Uh, so before I start about Maui, uh, let's take a look at uh, if you are playing with Maui right now. Let's do a quick poll uh, as to what you are thinking of building, right? Um, what does your gut feeling say uh, based on what you're seeing right now? And granted, it's it's early days. Uh, can we have the poll, please? Uh, so we see what uh, all of you are thinking. Maybe, maybe. There it is. All right. Um, so what type of apps are you thinking of building with, with Dr. Maui? Are you sold on... Uh, the existing promise that, you know, Xamarin was for iOS and Android only. You could run Xamarin on, you know, desktop, but uh, support was just not there. You never had a lot of confidence, but now Microsoft is trying to give you that confidence with .NET and .NET 6 and, you know, .NET MAUI. So are you looking to target desktop apps as well? Or, you know, for, are you just doing Windows? Are you doing Mac? Is there a need for you to go cross platform and have the app it's the same app run on mobile and desktop. And this is this is a big, big deal, I feel. You know, uh, I'll, I'll show you a little bit of Maori stuff. Like for the first time, you're seeing UI from us that works on, you know, mobile and desktop. And you know, still so, early days, yeah. As you, as, as you all answer the poll, Sam, uh, let me share some of the uh, chat stuff here. Uh, sure. John Lord says, did he just say you can use Blazor in a desktop? in desktop development. <laughs> yes. Uh, so yes, uh, I did send John the article from Code Magazine that I wrote uh, that yeah. talks all about uh, Blazor hybrid. If you if you do a quick Google search for it, you can find it. It is Code Magazine uh, Blazor hybrid. You can probably find it that way real, real quick. Um, but yes, you can you can pull uh, Blazor into a desktop application, access native APIs and that sort of thing. It's a feature that's coming uh, later this year to .NET MAUI. Uh, we also have um, a question that you can answer, Sam. What's Mac Catalyst? Okay, well, we'll get into that a little bit more maybe, um, but uh, you know, looking at the poll answers here, uh, it's a mixed bag. Uh, it's great that you're doing iOS and Android, but 
you know, you see that it's not a, a you know minimal amount of people who are wanting things to work on desktop and cross-platform is is big, right? So uh, to the point of Blazor on hybrid, to the point of Mac Catalyst, these things are very real. And that's what uh, .NET MAUI is trying to enable, right? So let, let's get into that. And again, like Ed said, we have been writing about this. Like if you do a search, if you go to blogs, our blogs, if you do a search on like Blazor on desktop, you're going to see some stuff. And uh, we have, you know, put together, you know, sample projects where you can see our Blazor UI working on desktop applications. Uh, so I will try to show you all of that. Okay. So uh, all right. An excellent uh, ongoing blog called The Sands of MAUI. That, uh, yeah, that's that's to yeah. get a lot of info from. Sure, sure. That's to keep on top of all the Maui things, which uh, we'll we'll talk about uh, some of that. Um, but okay. the fact that we are excited uh, shows because we are um, we have a uh, you know a, a brand new suite uh, out called Telerik UI from Dot and Maui. We have actually been on the journey with Microsoft from last March. And again, if I'm being honest, uh, things have been a little painful because like this is brand new stuff uh, that we uh, that Microsoft is doing. So there have been uh, you know breaking changes as we go from pre-release to release, um, and we are nearing a point where there will be uh, you know RC bits, release candidates bits, and GA. Uh, but for us, uh, this is important for us uh, because uh, you know anybody starting fresh cross-platform uh, .NET dev will likely look at Dr. Maui. So we want to give you uh, a UI suite that has all the things that you, you know, crave for, and it works for all of your cross-platform needs. And, uh, you know, I'm, uh, I'm a little biased because I work with this team and the Xamarin team uh, quite a bit, and the team has put in so much of engineering love into this to kind of ramp up and get, get us going and give you all the hard-hitting things that you need uh, in a UI suite from us. Um, so we are talking about, uh, you know, a brand new UI uh, that is cross-platform. Uh, I will say some of this is in the works because, again, just like what dot, uh, Dr. Maui is doing, just like what Microsoft is doing, we are also starting with iOS and Android first. But now we are trying to see uh, things working on, you know, desktop. And uh, for the first time, uh, we um, we have a data grid that's, again, still been working on, so the APIs might change. You, you can, I mean, we have a grid that works on iOS, Android, uh, Windows and Mac, which is exciting. So uh, again, if you go out to blogs, you're going to see uh, a post where we talked about all the things that we have pushed out in the Maui release. So .NET Maui, right now, the previews ship every month, and we kind of follow Microsoft like right after every release. Uh, so we ship way more frequently than our major Telerik releases. So between like R3 and R1, there is a whole bunch of stuff we have shipped. Um, obviously, the list view, which works everywhere, different types of layout controls, you know, uh, numeric inputs, maps. Uh, and as of like yesterday evening, uh, or early morning yesterday, we had a brand new release that works with .NET Maui Preview 12, which is the latest bits uh, from Microsoft. We put in a brand new um, control, the badge view, which you uh, have uh, from desktop controls, but now it works on Maui, and it should work on mobile and desktop as well. So uh, exciting things happening in the Maui space. And again, uh, more on what we have shipped, different types of pickers. These are, you know, uh, very important for mobile form factors because it's, you know, touch first. Uh, people want to get in and out quickly when you're doing these uh, picker selections. So you have, you know, date time um, and, you know, time span pickers. Uh, you have different types of list pickers, which are completely custom. So you can throw whatever lists you want the, uh, you know, users to pick, and it's completely templated to your needs. We have masked edits, we have rating control, and anytime you're doing anything busy, there is a busy indicator so you can let the user know that uh, uh, something um, is, is being done on the app. So again, we have been busy with, with Maui and uh, you know, as of the last release, as of earlier this week, uh, we are also starting to crank out uh, some demo apps so you can play around with it. There is a demo that you can play with when you install it, but now we're giving you more. There is a new crypto uh, tracker app, which is very cool. Uh, as long as you're not asking Ed or me to, you know, uh, explain cryptocurrencies because we're going to fail glamorously. Uh, but uh, the, the bits are out on GitHub and they're also the same ones that you get uh, when you download. So, again, we are excited about Maui and the possibilities of true cross-platform dev, uh, iOS, Android, Windows and, uh, and Mac. Okay, um, and I would like to show you some of this, but let's, uh, you know, do mobile all in one go. 
uh, Xamarin. Again, this is the present reality. This is a production ready thing. And, you know, I have been a big fan. Like I, I literally remember the day when we first started our Xamarin suite uh, and, you know, everyone was so excited and we have poured in so much love into this since like 2015, I think. Um, so it's a very, very rich UI suite. Now, all of the controls, the, you know, data visualization, navigation, layout, everything that you uh, can think of for Xamarin iOS, for Xamarin Android and Xamarin Forms. It's all in there. A uh, lot of, you know, performance uh, tuning. So we do virtualization. Uh, anytime you bind, uh, you know, a lot of data to a UI, we are careful in how we render and how we look ahead and bind. Um, completely customizable and the beauty is uh, it works either way so as a uh, mobile developer like you should not be stuck to just windows or just mac and we work uh, no matter where you are at uh, we got you know nice ways to get started there's nuget packages vs toolbox integration so you can do drag and drop uh, you know common templates common screens and document processing we'll get to this a little bit more when we talk about desktop but this is something ed and me are you know, big fans of uh, enterprise workflows. A lot of enterprise workflows need uh, to work with documents, you know, your Excel spreadsheets and your Word documents and your PDFs and reports. Uh, we got all of that figured out so we can do all of that in memory and it's a .NET standard library. So you can work, uh, work it from all of our web, your mobile and your desktop applications. So that's real nice and lots of sample apps to play around with. What's new this release? We have a brand new signature pad because every uh, you know app that requires a user signature would need this. Um, so we are glad to bring this out. And it just works the same way on iOS, Android, and everywhere that you expect. Uh, you can give it you know a custom border you can change the stroke color the thickness and um, how the user is signing and there's a nice like saving api so once the user is done you can actually programmatically save that signature as uh, as an image and then you get to also customize like exactly how you save it we give you a dialog to do that so uh, pretty exciting wow. control here yeah sam i just want to know how you guys got my signature in that, that <laughs> gift <laughs> Well, uh, it's it's unreadable, so that's the only way we could uh, you know think of using this. <laughs> All right, so a uh, few more upgrades here, uh, you know, throughout the suite. Uh, we obviously have a data grid that works beautifully with just about any type of data, but um, yeah, this was actually a, a thing that was highly voted. Uh, there's this concept of data sets and data tables, which are essentially in-memory relational databases. Sometimes you do it all on the fly. Sometimes you populate them from Entity Framework or SQL or wherever it is that your data source is, and you try to work with it, all of that in-memory. So essentially a collection of tables that are related. There might be constraints, and we can bind to all of that uh, with simple item source and, you know, once you do bind it to a data grid, all of the features just work. Our image editor gets a bit of love. Uh, we have a, a toolbar that lets you, you know, manipulate the image in a lot of variety of ways. And now you can do it all programmatically. So you don't even actually need to use the, you know, uh, the toolbar. You can have the user do something else and programmatically change uh, the image while you're doing this. Uh, autocomplete view gets a you know update as to where the suggestions work. When you start typing, where does the user see the suggestion view? Is it on top? Is it at the bottom? And and so on. So uh, nice little updates all through. And uh, for Xamarin in particular, we have a lot of different things for you to play around with. Like we could show you Hello World apps, but you know most people want to see a full-blown uh, mobile app that's in the stores, that's using maybe an MVVM framework, maybe it's MVVM that's built into Xamarin Forms. Is it using Azure and all of those things? So we have, you know, a bunch of apps that you can uh, get to the source code. They're all out on GitHub. Uh, you know, go to the Xamarin product page and it, it'll list out all of these uh, sample apps as well as the app that uh, I'm going to show you, which is kind of the app that's in the stores. So we're trying to give you a lot of help so you can uh, get some inspiration uh, for your apps. Okay. So with that, let's look at some demos, right? Uh, all right. So the first thing uh, I want to do is uh, if I go to Tillery.com and you do mobile. These are the two things you see, Maui and Xamarin, right? So if you go into Maui, uh, you want to play around with this. This is a brand new landing page. And again, keep in mind, this is preview because Maui is not out of preview yet. Dr. Maui, we are looking to ship this uh, as soon as Microsoft is ready. Uh, so you can see like we have the heavy hitters in there already. Uh, you can hit that big download button and you know start playing around with it. So when you do, here's what you get out of the box. So uh, by default, it'll go to whichever place you want to install. I do it in my documents. And you can see like things are getting serious. Like we are onto like semantic versioning. We are onto 
uh, 4.0. Uh, so that's the latest, uh, and that package is the you know the Nupcake, the Nuket package that enables all of your Maui stuff is right there. Uh, but we also have binaries for you know different platforms, iOS, Android, Windows, and Mac. And then we have examples, and this is where uh, things are new because we have a brand new crypto tracker app, and this is the SDK app. Uh, so. How do you run this? I'm on a Mac and I can run this on Windows as well, but let me show you the not so shiny experience because you know most of the Windows uh, experience is nice with Visual Studio 2022. Uh, but if you are on uh, a Mac, things still work, it's just command line. Uh, so I'm on that folder and I can do, uh, let's do an iOS build. So what I'm doing, and it's going to be unlike Ed who just needs a browser to, you know, pull up his whole application. I need a little bit more drama because uh, these are native bits and we have to launch the simulators and all that stuff. So what it's doing right now is it uh, it's doing the build and I'm on a Mac so it knows how to go to Xcode, uh, do the build, come back with an app package, find the default iOS simulator and then launch it. Now, this being uh, you know a .NET Maui project, it is multi-targeted so I can use the same code base and all of the different platforms are essentially folders, uh, which I can show you uh, in a minute, but um, everything lives in a folder and the builds are smart enough to figure out that you're doing an iOS build versus a Mac build or an Android build, right? So uh, it chooses the default uh, iPad simulator in this case to be my uh, you know, default iOS. And I can actually change where I run this. I can run this on an iPhone uh, simulator as well. So uh, this is where uh, Ed's browser comes in quicker than my iPad simulator gets cold start. It has to. Well, while enable. that loads, Sam, uh, yeah. we've got some questions coming in. Sure, um, sure. <clears throat> we've got some folks doing uh, Mac uh, OS dev. Uh, we've got some using, uh, actually the same user, using Telerik uh, WPF controls. And mm -hmm. uh, they're kind of curious, like, uh, what should we use for, you know, where's Telerik going to be on the Mac OS side of things? Um, and what is the parity between uh, MAUI and the Telerik WPF controls? Like, uh, what, what okay. components are available and what's that roadmap look like? Okay, um, let me try answering that. And this is a loaded question because um, we cannot magically make WPF apps work on the Mac. It's just not the same runtime, not the same canvas, nothing will um, be the same. But um, having said that, Dot and Maui is essentially XAML and C Sharp. I mean, you can do F Sharp, you can do pure C Sharp for your visual tree, but it is C Sharp and XAML. So while you cannot use your UI as is from WPF, you can start bringing over a lot of those things, uh, and Maui is the only way your .NET apps will work on Mac, right? Because it is using that Mac Catalyst bridge that I talked about. Um, so when you have UI Kit apps uh, for iOS, and they're running on an iOS device like iPad or iPhone, you have all of the UI that's uh, for iOS. And then when you jump it over to Mac, then you're suddenly on AppKit and they open up a few more APIs. So you have a little bit more real estate, which I can show you. Um, and um, you just have, uh, you're running on desktop. Same way with WPF as well. Like there is no magic wand, but you can bring over you can start um, you know, uh, cleaning up your code base so all of your business logic is a .NET standard library. Then try to move over some of the XAML, some of the views and recreate them. There is again, no magic wand, but you can get away. If you know how to do your XAML in C-sharp, you can get quite a bit forward. And um, you know, um, in terms of WPF and like Telerik, where we stand, our WPF suite, which we'll talk about, it's it's a mature suite. There are like 150 plus controls and Maui is less than a year old, right? So we don't have parity yet, but most of the things that you're gonna need for your you know, mobile dev or your desktop apps, it's starting to have those things. So uh, eventually you will have all of the bells and whistles that you want for your Maui development, okay? I already see right, a couple I big things in their map and data grid, so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, no, Pretty this cool. is a super simple app. It just tries to show you all of our UI in one place. And uh, this is the new badge view that I showed you. So I'm running the latest bits on, uh, you know, Dr. Maui Preview 12. Uh, you know, the, the things that you uh, expect in a, uh, in a mobile app, they're there. You know, different types of busy indicators. You can customize the animations. You, know, you can do custom animations. You can do, you know, built-in animations. Uh, so we give you a lot of choice. Uh, and again, like Ed said, most of those things are in there. Uh, charts and graphs, you know, who doesn't want charts and graphs? You, we got the heavy hitters here, you know, different types of, you know, this can be done in XAML, this can be done in C Sharp. Uh, so they're all in their candlestick. Uh, data grid, look at that. This is a grid. And again, like I said, for the first time, works on iOS, 
Android, Windows, and Mac. And again, we are still working, working on this performance during it, but it's a data grid uh, that just works, um, you know, and it, it has all of the features that you expect from our data grid. Um, doc layout, this is something super handy for, you know, laying out your controls where things need to be uh, position-wise. Uh, so you're, you're planning out your app, uh, you know, different types of gauges and charts. Uh, I, I love our, you know, linear gauges and radial gauges. They're all in there. Um, and, you know, I can keep going on and on. This is a place for you to play around with. I love our rating controls, uh, you know, different types of rating controls that we have, different types of geometries, and you can customize and bring in your own shapes if you want. A uh, lot of different ways to configure things, and the pickers are there. So it's it's there. It's, it's, it's getting there. Uh, now, let me show you one more thing here. If I uh, move up uh, and let's do uh, go into our um, crypto app, it's called Crypto Tracker, which again, we give you the source code, but you can also uh, go get it from um, GitHub if you want. Uh, let's do an iOS build. And so this is brand new. It's a sample app that kind of hopefully shows you what is possible when you have all the UI that you need um, to you know, build a real world uh, you know, maybe a stocks application, maybe uh, something that your enterprise needs, maybe a, uh, some sort of a tracking application or a dashboard application. That's what this is, uh, you know, meant to uh, meant to show you. So it's going to spin for just one second because uh, I I did close it. Uh, so out comes a little crypto app which should uh, show you different types of you know bitcoins and uh, you know uh, I, I don't know much about these things. I can't speak to exactly what uh, or how they're performing. But once you go into the app, you can see like I can I can choose um, uh, a certain type of uh, you know cryptocurrency. I can see the trends and I can see historical data. Uh, and I can have you know candlestick charts and then a variety of things. So it's there for you to kind of look around. The source code is there. But here's the beauty of you know .NET Maui. So without like so far, I have not even opened up my editor, right? Uh, because I can run the same app, uh, just switch up the build. You can see that I'm doing a .NET build, but I'm doing Mac Catalyst. You know, folks were asking about this. You don't have to worry about this. This is Apple's problem to figure this all out. But once you have that bigger surface area maybe you can you know reconsider how your app is rendering so this is the crypto app right but now it's a desktop application you you see it down here on my you know um on my dock and now because we have the more real estate uh, we can actually go around and you know show the app a little differently right so all of your maui app is supposed to work um you know seamlessly between ios uh, android windows and mac so uh, we are excited about this and you know the possibilities and i am watching my clock here i do need to get to desktop and uh, but give me a minute uh, or maybe not like a minute <laughs> 15 20 minutes and we'll try to come back uh, to some maui stuff uh, now, so that's the, you know, looking ahead at the future, uh, but what does the present look like? And that is uh, Xamarin. So I'm going to pull up uh, Visual Studio here on my Mac, uh, which is VS4 Mac is right now in preview. Uh, they are reworking a lot of the UI, but you know, most things uh, do work. Uh, so I'm talking about Xamarin here, and I'm going to pull up an app. Um, if you have an iOS or an Android or a Windows device here, yeah, go to your store and do a search on Telerik. Uh, you're most likely going to hit uh, this app that I'm going to show you here. Uh, we give you the entire source code for this, so you know exactly how to you know, run this or how we are doing things. This is a full-blown. This is actually a, a fairly uh, realistic, heavy app uh, that has all of our UI, uh, You know, all of the UI that you see in Xamarin. All of it is right there. Uh, and I can run this um, on iOS or iPhone or you know, Android. Uh, so let's do a quick uh, start without debugging. Visual Studio, for some reason, is giving me some squigglies, but it should still build uh, while it's catching up because it's doing the you know restores. But while it's coming out, this is an example for you to see how we are. You know, this is the app that's out there. That this is our sample uh, app for you to play around with all the UI uh, without installing anything on on Visual Studio. So it should give you a fair idea of all the things that are out of the box and. We actually don't use any MVVM frameworks in here. This is like MVVM that's built into Xamarin Forms, and uh, we are careful in how we have our view models, how we have our behaviors, our you know, converters, our FX. Everything is nicely separated out. So I really do like this, you know, code base that it's it's so real, and uh, this is the same, uh, you know, code that's firing up the app that you see on your uh, on your devices. Uh, so it's still uh, doing a quick build and. Uh, Trying to think where it can deploy, and again, this is where uh, Ed's quicker because I have to do a full uh, full build and, and come back. But it's coming; it's almost done. 
Yeah, we we could probably relate to uh, some of the folks in chat here. Um, Alex says uh, he's he's got about 50 gigs of disk space left on his mm. drive. Oh, uh, yeah. And was was waiting to uh, learn a little bit more about Maui. <laughs> and, yes. Uh, and waiting on the on the right time to clear out some yeah, disk space me, uh... for it. Let me uh, let me switch to Windows and then I'll uh, maybe uh, show you a little bit of uh, more um, you know stuff on 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 Windows. And uh, looks like I haven't maybe run this app in a while, so it's still building and it's taking it's a uh, sweet little time. Let's see, uh, did the build fail? Um, so what I'm trying to show you is um, the signature pad that is so cool. And let's see if I'm getting uh, any errors. Uh, okay. So I might have to, you know, close and redo this one time. Um, we have we have 30 minutes. We can do this, right? And let's stop the build, and we'll we'll just try this because like something was not right with the Visual Studio when it pulled up. It's giving me a whole bunch of squigglies, which is clearly code that does build. Uh, so we're going to do a quick uh, quit and try to bring Visual Studio up again. And do a force quit. Sure. All right, now it's gone, and let's pull this up one time, and then if if it uh, still takes more time to build, we'll switch over to Windows, um, because uh, you know a lot of exciting things happening on desktop as well, which is again the reality for uh, so many enterprise apps. So we'll try this one time, and if you think uh, my machine uh, is running out of space, wait till I uh, pull up uh, my VM. Uh, Developers. Like we go through some disk space. I, yeah, we do. I I have to get a better rule of thumb on when I order a new machine, like to double what I expect I'm gonna need out of my disk. Yeah. The, these SDKs, man. Yeah, and then the, try doing some uh, some Unity stuff. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, the moment you go VR, AR, and AR. A lot more uh, heft. Uh, this time around, though, it looks like Visual Studio opened up a little bit uh, better. Uh, so it, it is trying to pull up. And, and while it's doing so, uh, I wanted to show you like a quick uh, glimpse into what uh, this looks like. Uh, so this XAML that you see, yes, it looks a little verbose. I know folks like uh, Ed don't like it, but uh, you know, for native apps, this is uh, what we live in, live and breathe, and it's great. You have all the tools, uh, you know, at your disposal. Uh, so uh, once this uh, app comes up, you can see uh, the signature pad, which is uh, somewhere down here. It's just that it's everything is rad because it's rapid application development. So rad signature pad. Uh, you got your stroke color, your your background color. Everything is right there. And you know, um, I am uh, no, it is starting up, but it's just real slow. But this one, uh, you know, with Visual Studio, is trying to uh, launch it on iPhone 13 uh, as my simulator. Um, but uh, I would love to show you the signature pad real quick, and then we'll switch gears to uh, to desktop. All right, so out comes uh, the app. And again, this is the app that you can actually pull up on your Android or iOS device. You don't need to install all of this stuff in Visual Studio. You can just uh, download this from the stores. So this is very real for us because it's the same app that we ship. So in here are all of our UI, you know. Uh, you know, five or six years of UI is all in here. Uh, you can play around and look at the performance of what you do. Uh, we can switch to, you know, the light mode, dark mode. That's so easy now. Uh, signature pad. I mean, there are some bunch of new things in here, but if this is the one that uh, one thing I'm going to show, uh, it's just so easy. Like I can uh, I can sign right here and I can confirm. You get a dialog and then you get to save this uh, image off, and it's just uh, so easy. And when I go into configuration here, you can see that I can change. If, I, if you wanted to go crazy a little bit, you can change uh, uh, the background colors uh, and the border colors, and then everything is a little diff different, right? So you have a signature pad that's kind of built right in um, uh, for your, uh, you know, your mobile apps. And just like what Ed showed you, everything that says, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, the updated label here, <clears throat> Excuse me. That is uh, a way for us to tell you that something changed in that control. So you know, install the app. You know, go around and and see what's updated. And the entire source code is right there for you to kind of look into how we do like a full blown um, app that's in the stores. Okay. So uh, I am going to switch gears to desktop, right? And before I do that, I'm going to launch up my beloved uh, VM, and we'll talk about uh, you know WinUI and WPF and all the good things. 
while, while you're switching over, Sam, uh, we're, we're getting some excitement in chat about these new things. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, we have comments coming in like, uh, we need these components. Uh, feedback.teller.com yeah. is an excellent Feedback. place to put all of those things. Um, he's he's talk, or they're talking about Kanban boards and notifications mm -hmm. and yeah. graphic yeah. tools. These are all things that we want to hear on feedback, so we can upvote yeah. those and get them in the roadmap. Mm -hmm. Some of them uh, is already uh, already there. And in fact, like let's um, let's pull up the hold on, let's pull up the next poll. Maybe is one we have. <clears throat> Excuse me, and then we can um, keep talking through it. So so for desktop folks, we have a lot of choice, right? Uh, and this is where you know uh, Elena or other folks were asking like, where do you even start? And uh, what uh, what gives? Well, why do we have so much of choice? Because it's it's liberating because it we are sitting on a lot of you know um, you know years of development. So um, some of the things that you're asking for like a Kanban board or something, those are already in there uh, in our desktop suites. Um, it's a matter of like, do you really need that on on mobile device? If you do, please uh, do tell us. But uh, you know, um, folks were asking uh, at the start, like, if I'm starting up a greenfield project uh, desktop today, what should I do? Or what if I have existing, uh, you know, desktop investments in WPF or WinForms? What should I do? Um, so let's talk about all of that. But uh, before we do, uh, do tell us what you are doing. Like, if you are um, you know, writing a desktop application today, be it existing or be it something new, what are you using? Okay, so going once, going twice, and let's see the results. I bet this will be a mixed bag. Oh, look at that. This makes me very happy. A lot of you are looking into Dr. Maui. This is exciting. But again, WPF WinForms, that's the present reality, has been for years and years. Nothing wrong in that. Uh, WinUI is starting to catch up as well. So to address uh, maybe Elaine's question earlier, uh, like if you if I am starting up a brand new uh, Windows desktop uh, app today, which one would I use? You know, again, things would be different. Your answer would be different based on what else you have going on. But my two cents is WinUI is your latest Windows stack. And if you have the option of starting afresh, why wouldn't you pick the latest one? But that's only if Windows is all that you want to do. Uh, because the moment you bring in cross-platform, then you're looking at Maui. Uh, but again, uh, as we'll talk about WinForms and WPF, if that's what you're doing, uh, your, your house is not on fire. Keep on doing that, and you can bring in so much of modern stuff into uh, you know, WinForms and uh, WPF, which is uh, quite amazing. Okay, let's, uh, let's talk about uh, WinUI uh, real quick here. So WinUI is brand new uh, because it is a brand new, it's the newest uh, UI suite um, uh, from Microsoft UI stack. And we are riding on top of WinUI 3 and it has taken a lot of effort. Uh, you know, we talked about WPF being, you know, like 15 years of engineering that's been put into it. And WinUI is trying to catch up uh, within a couple of uh, years. And I'm super impressed with how much uh, the team is able to put out every release uh, to you know bring things up to speed for a you know full-on uh, XAML-based uh, desktop platform that you're building for. Uh, we do now support Windows App SDK, which includes WinUI 3 as of like last November. Uh, there were some updates to the Fluent Design System, so all of the latest Windows styles, they're all in there. You can do MVVM, you got accessibility built in. We actually spend a lot of time accessibility-wise, both on WPF and on WinUI. Uh, localization, everything is uh, right there for you. Uh, and all of the things, like to my point of, you know, things being, uh, having to ramp up really quickly. Uh, we have all the things, you know, the big grid, grids, the list view, the schedulers, you know, the calendars, the charts, maps, graphs, different types of gauges, spark lines, uh, ribbon view, which is something uh, you don't get out of the box and a lot of people use the ribbon. Uh, everything is there and document processing library support is right there, which we'll talk about more. Uh, virtualization, everything is right there for you to kind of start. What is new in this release? We have a whole bunch of buttons for you. And these are not your standard buttons that you get with dot, dot .NET. I like to call them buttons on steroids because they have so much of features, you know, events and commands and all types of customizations on their appearance, rounded corners, image in the back, you name it, uh, you, you got it all. And we are splitting it out into a variety of different buttons so you can choose the one that uh, works for you. Map uh, gets a brand new upgrade here. So Map, and again, everything that I have uh, in VR is a small breaking change, not as much as what 
Ed was talking about, but this is where the API is a little different. So our mapping component, you could uh, zoom in and out, uh, but that was on an integer level, but now it's double. So you get much more you know, control over how much you want to zoom. And uh, you can do it, uh, the, you can control the step with a slider or a mouse wheel, and it's just much more fluid. And that zoom component, uh, the, the, the zoom step is gone, it's just called zoom, and that's how you control the level of zoom now. Uh, so that's right there for you. Data grids, if you're doing grouping, the grouping panel now shows up on the top of the data grid, which is kind of the default and the nicer looking thing anyway. So, and you can switch around uh, where uh, you want to group uh, or what you want to group based on. Uh, so that's new and that kind of brings it at par with what we had in WTF. Masked inputs, these are again needed for all types of inputs that you collect from the user. And honestly, like, for the different types of inputs, it gets a little complicated. So we have broken it out into like seven or eight different masked inputs. So your text inputs, your email, your date time, your IP address, your, uh, you know, all of your custom regex, they are all split out. So now you have clean APIs. Uh, so again, if you are using a master uh, right now, we give you a little migration guide so you know exactly which one to use uh, for your needs. All right, so document processing. Uh, remember I said, this is the document standard library that powers everything we do across web, mobile, and desktop. And this gets a whole lot of love. Uh, if you're doing anything with spreadsheets, now we have conditional formatting. So you can control, and keep in mind, all of this is in memory. You have fine-tuned control over every cell, every row that you're painting and showing to the user, either as a spreadsheet in the app itself, or things that you're building on the fly and then exporting out from your app. So now you can have conditional formatting. So you can format the cells based on uh, their values, which is actually really nice to kind of visually show a lot of things. You see this like green and red thing that's kind of visually showing it. Um, also, if you're doing spreadsheets, uh, you can do notes, which are little comments that you leave on every row or, or column. Now you can add, remove, edit, or you know, show and hide uh, notes uh, from your uh, spread processing and when you export that out, uh, which I'll, I'll show you. Uh, what processing? Um, uh, Ed, I don't know if you know what mail merge means. Uh, this is where if you get an email, a marketing email that says, hello, and then first name, that's where mail merge failed, and they uh, failed to bind from the data source. Uh, it should really have your uh, first name uh, because they're trying to bind to a data source, and those data sources get complex. Now you can have like nested data sources with you know sub-objects, and you can bind to all of it, so it can do like a complex uh, nested mail merge in, in word processing. So pretty That's exciting. The important uh, takeaway is uh, that I can play Sudoku in, um, <laughs> yes, yeah, in my that, spreadsheets. That you could. Those notes are like Sudoku uh, you know, uh, cheat sheets. <laughs> okay, uh, now on to you know, WPF and WinFromps. Like, uh, like I said, WinUI is the latest stack. If you are starting up Greenfield, by all means, look into that. But a lot of enterprise customers are doing WPF and WinFromps, and it's incredibly productive places to be in. Uh, it's drag and drop, and it's you have years of investment building up very, very mature polished UI. So you don't need to go anywhere, right? So all of this runs everywhere, it's particularly our UI. You want to stay on .NET Framework? Have at it. You know, .NET Core 3.1, that was LTS, and .NET 6 is out. So you're going to see all across uh, what we do with WinUI, with uh, WinForms, with WPF. All of our stuff now runs on .NET 6, and you can work in Visual Studio 2022. So all of the latest bits, the runtimes, you're running these desktop apps on the latest runtimes in .NET. So you can bring in modern pieces of UI like ink support or touch support, um, and you know maybe XAML islands, you can bring in Blazor islands now. So all of that is very doable uh, from your WinForms or your WPF apps, which is uh, quite exciting. So let's talk about what is WPF uh, and what's new. Uh, well, like I said, uh, we have updated all the things uh, to .NET 6. And Make sure you have VS 2022 support. We have, again, folks might, uh, might not realize, but you have uh, like half a dozen really polished WPF apps that are at your disposal to you know, get inspired from. Uh, Outlook themed apps, uh, real dashboard apps, uh, uh, the color theme generator, which I'll try to show you. I love that because it is um, a place for you to kind of manipulate the themes that you're using in your controls and how you can kind of make things your own, customize them and start from there. Uh, so everything runs on the latest bits, and you can get to all of that from your download section, uh, and they're also linked. It's just a simple MSI install. Now, this is what Ed uh, wishes he has for his web. Maybe he does in a, in a little way, but uh, we have a brand new step progress bar, and you'll see it for you know, WinForms as well. Uh, but this is anytime you are utilizing something of a multi-step process, a wizard, 
you can now actually show the user. Like think about these UI thing. How many times you see it all over the web? Uh, I'm sure you can do this with in the UI or Blazor, but no. we have this in Blazor. Okay, all right, I'll give it to you. But we didn't have it yet uh, for desktop. Now we do. Uh, but it's a great way to kind of depict the steps that the user is taking and the progress they are making. Completely customizable. Like you see the top, uh, that's the default view. But you can bring in your own imagery. You can control how the steps look like, how the flows looks like. Everything is customizable, and it's it's a really really rich control for all of your unique and modern kind of look and feel. Uh, so we are really proud of that. Uh, text boxes, uh, especially if you're using um, any of the embedded like masking, the watermark feature is really nice. Uh, notice how nicely we have a watermark, and then as you zoom in and out of it, it either stays. And this is something you can get to control the animations as well, and it's very customizable. So um, you can really have uh, a very polished UX um, that you want as the user is flowing through the text boxes. Mapping gets the same like smooth zooming that we saw with uh, with Real UI as well. Uh, the panel bar. This is something a lot of folks use. You know, uh, be it in accordion, be it in straight up, throwing a lot of hierarchical data that's grouped. Uh, now the panel bar gets two really nice features. One is the resize. So inside the panel bar, you can actually resize the you know the container as well as scrolling. So if you do have a lot of content, you can let the user scroll through. And anytime we are throwing up a window, which is in our you know rad window or tabbed view or any of the docking windows or ribbon window. Anytime we are throwing up a window, we now we can now uh, kind of do the Windows 11 style, which is you know rounded corners, and you get to customize. There's a corner radius, so you get to tell us exactly how your rounding looks like. But uh, you know if your your users are running on Windows 11, give them a look and feel that is uh, Windows 11. And uh, this might look familiar, right? Because the same document processing updates that you saw with WinUI, uh, they make it over to WPF as well, and to WinForms, and to Xamarin, and other things, right? So Conditional formatting, note support, mail merge, it's its all in there. All right, let's talk about WinForms, and then I'm going to switch to uh, demos all in one uh, so we can talk about desktop. Now, this might look familiar, right? Because it's the same progress bar, but now you can do it from WinForms as well. So your WinForms application don't need to look like they were built in 2010. They can be very, very modern, and it's incredibly productive for devs to be in WinForms or in a web forms for, uh, for a web do what, what works for you, right? And we give you all the UI uh, to be successful. All fully customizable, great theming support. Um, now, this one's brand new for WinForms. It's a tree map control. Uh, this is where you have a lot of uh, like gigantic amounts of you know hierarchical data or that's grouped. This lets you see the patterns, like a quick, easy, easy way to see what, uh, like a comparison when you don't have a lot of space. It's a rectangular area that we are going to paint proportional to the data dimensions that you have in your data set, right? And we can use a couple of different tiling algorithms, squarified or slice and dice, that lets you your users kind of visualize uh, very quickly what's going on. And again, very customizable with colorizers, uh, selections, and, and ordering. Um, like I said, everything runs on Docking 6 as well, true for WinForms. And again, you can embed Blazor inside of WinForms, inside of WPF. There's nothing stopping you, uh, which is very exciting nowadays. And uh, again, all sample apps are updated. There is a new VS 2022 light theme, because that's what we just Studio 2022 ships with. Uh, so we just thought we'll give you uh, another theme. And all of the DPL updates, the document processing is in there uh, as well. All right, I got 13 minutes left. This is not bad, because I can uh, show off all my desktop uh, demos really quickly. All right, here is my Windows machine. Right, and I'm going to pull up uh, Visual Studio 2022. I'm right now on Preview 3, uh, which is the latest preview, actually. Um, if if you're doing Maui development, uh, and actually it might ask me to uh, pull this up in admin mode. Um, if you are doing .NET Maui development, you need to be on a preview. You can't just be on Visual Studio 2022. You're not going to see some of the templates, so make sure you get on either Preview 1, 2, or 3. Um, that's how you can see all the Maui bits uh, show up. Uh, but this one is, uh, you know, WinUI, and what I'm trying to show you is when you install uh, WinUI, we give you all of this, um, you know, right out of the box. So if I go to uh, C and Program Files, uh, let's see where I keep my stuff, Progress, and that's my WinUI. See, WinUI is now 1.0. It's it's ready. Uh, so examples. This is the app that I'm showing you. This is the app that works on, you know, uh, you know, native Win32 as well as uh, .NET native like for store apps. So this is a big app because it has all of our UI. And if you wanted to kind of step through, for example, the buttons 
these are this is the XAML that renders all of our you know native buttons, right? Uh, so you can look through all of the source code. You can see that I have different types of buttons here: split button, red drop-down button. Um, so you can run this locally, or you can actually uh, just run the app, right? Once you have it, you can actually get the app just in the install. And once you have the app, you may not actually need uh, to go through Visual Studio because most of our desktop apps actually do this really nicely, where we give you the relevant source code that you need anyways uh, inside the app. So I'm going to pull up the WinUI app, and actually I'm going to close uh, Visual Studio here for a minute. So out comes the um, uh, Telerik WinUI uh, sample app. Right? This is updated, and just like what you saw with Ed, everything that's new or updated is marked clearly, so lots and lots of controls. Uh, let's look at the buttons here. You get uh, the first look, which is kind of smattering of a few buttons here, but I like going into uh, the supported types here, which shows you all the buttons that we have, uh, you know, regular buttons, uh, toggle buttons, you know, you know, drop down or radio buttons. Uh, this one says split, uh, but it's a toggle as well, so I can split the state as well as I can get a drop down. So really nice. And uh, if I look into the code, the code tab exactly pulls up the same, uh, you know, files from the Visual Studio. It shows you the XAML and shows you the XAML.cs. So everything that you need to know is right here. So uh, if you needed to know exactly how do I render something, uh, the code is right there. Uh, data grid, uh, again, a bunch of things that are new. This table row uh, or data table support is, uh, again, binding to an in-memory data table. Um, let me show you the sales dashboard here. This is, again, a full-on sales dashboard, but you see that uh, ordering, the grouping. Uh, I can change uh, exactly how that uh, ordering is done all of that grouping uh, panel, the position is now on top and that's the default and it's, it's real nice. Uh, so that's the data grid. Uh, let's uh, go down here to the map. Uh, and again, map gets a few updates here, but let's talk about the zooming one here. Uh, so uh, it starts out here um, on, on Africa. It gives you like the zoom and the zoom step. These are things you can configure uh, and you can make the, the zooming, uh, you know, the, the slider visible or not. So this is the slider and kind of shows you how much you want to zoom, right? Uh, and then based on that, um, you can you can zoom around. Uh, I actually, um, my dad used to work in South Africa and Botswana, so I can I can zoom in and you can see like uh, based on your service provider and I, it depends a little bit on your connection as well. Like I can really drill down and I can control with the mouse scroll how uh, smooth that zooming experience is. Masked inputs, uh, you know, bunch of new things. Uh, everything is broken out right now and all of the configuration for the different types of mask inputs, they're all right there. If you want to do regex or phone numbers or emails, they're all there for you to kind of try it out. Now let's uh, talk about some of these uh, uh, document processing things that are so nice. First thing is conditional formatting. Uh, so let's say based on, this is my spreadsheet that I'm showing the user, either in memory or you know in the spreadsheet component, uh, I can export this document out and I have a little bit of code in my um, uh, in my code behind that says if the document is of a certain type, go ahead and color it that way. So let me uh, pull up this in my desktop and when I double click, I think it actually might open up on my Mac because um, I'm in uh, a virtual machine here. So out comes Excel. And let's see, where is Excel? It's loading. There you go. So you see how it's nice and visual because we had conditional formatting to tell you the make these things yellow, make these things green or red, right? So it's very visual and we can kind of carry it forward when you uh, export that app out. Um, again, um, more things here. If I go to spread processing, you see these notes here. Uh, so if I come in and say that uh, these are Sam's notes and I want to type to product ID, that's fine. Uh, let's do that. And then I do an export. Uh, it's going to give me another uh, document. Uh, yeah, go ahead and replace that. So when we um, look up my desktop and I open up this Excel spreadsheet, you are going to notice that it actually preserves the notes uh, right there. Everything says Samba Sue product ID that, and I can I can go into like review and I can uh, you know choose to not see the notes if I want, but it's it's all there for you, right? So notes and conditional formatting are now very welcome in, uh, in spread processing. Word processing is uh, doing mail merging. So for example, uh, this one here is that typical mail merge thing, hello client name. Uh, so uh, if I if I do a mail merge and it uh, we let it go ahead and save the document in my desktop, that's fine. And when I pull it up, it's um, uh, showing you 
uh, a simple mail merge here. This should open up in WordPad. So now it's like, hello, John Smith, and uh, the products that John Smith had ordered, hello, Mary Johnson, and the products that they had ordered. If you look at the code, uh, what it's doing is it's going through like a nested, uh, you know, object set here. Uh, so if I zoom in a little bit, so um, I have, uh, no, that's my XAML. Hold on. So let's go into the view model here. Uh, so this is my view of uh, the mail merge happening. That's my mail merge. And then uh, right here, I have, you know, a, a complex object that's like products. And then this customer is ordering this product. So there are relationships in there. We can kind of bind to all of it and make sure your mail merge is working right. Okay. So that is uh, WinUI. Now, let me uh, quickly switch gears to WPF. Now, these um, and, document processing things that you're showing, uh, those aren't isolated to one platform either. You can use document mm -hmm. processing libraries on all of our components, yep. uh, whether it's uh, web, desktop, mobile. Uh, so you can do those, those mail merge things using ASP.NET and send that on, off with, uh, uh, you know, .NET application that's running on, on the ASP.NET platform, Blazor, ASP.NET Core, MVC, web forms, all that stuff can do those as well. Yep, it is a .NET standard, it works everywhere. Mm -hmm. All right, now this is WPF, and I literally have gone to the Windows App Store and downloaded it, so that's how easy it is for you to play around with this. So this is not running from Visual Studio. So uh, in here, um, uh, I can see my new step progress bar, it looks so nice. Uh, I can go through, you know, a wizard and you can see the step progressing. Uh, and based on your needs, you can make it like selectable or not, right? So if I go into the configurator, um, I can choose to say, uh, yeah, you know, change the step shape um, and then how it looks like. Can the user select uh, and complete the previous step? Yes. So if I click on this, it knows that I have completed those steps, right? So that's right there. Uh, this watermark uh, is just so beautiful now. Um, let me show you the embedded label here. Uh, the first name, last name, like watch how easily when I tap through, watch the, um, the animations. This is just so beautiful, right? And uh, it's just a little nuanced thing that's just so nice with our watermark. Mapping, uh, you know, um, uh, the same demo pretty much that you see with WinUI, it's going to work. Uh, panel bar, uh, this is the regular panel. And again, you can use it like this. Uh, you can collapse it. Uh, you, this is for your all of your hierarchical data, or you can use it like in an accordion, um, you know, horizontal or vertical, we, we don't mind. Uh, but if you go back to here, and if you look into your options here, um, enable scroll viewer inside, and then enable item resizing. So with that, those two properties enabled, now I can uh, do this. I can, you know, collapse, or I can, I can uh, move things around. And if it's long enough, uh, then I will, and this one doesn't have much, but I will actually get a, uh, you know, scroll bar inside each panel if the contents uh, demand that, right? So those are two brand new things. Uh, the spreadsheet uh, will get the same updates to, you know, the conditional formatting notes, uh, that's right there for you. Uh, let's look at uh, WinForms real quick. And, Sam, did you mention where yeah. we can grab the, the source code for all of these demos you've shown? Okay, so uh, go to, uh, you know, um, go to today.com and if you go down here, pick any platform that you want. Let's say we are on uh, WPF. Uh, hit that download button. That's going to give you all the bits and the demo source code, which is for that app. Or if you don't want to uh, do that, just go to the stores and then play around with the app itself. And like I said, uh, uh, each of the apps, each of the desktop apps, we take care to kind of highlight the code that you need to render uh, some of that UI. Okay. Uh, so when you're installing, bar, you get the option to install the demos. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. It's by default. You get the demos. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, um, you know, progress bar, uh, same idea, but, uh, you know, the progress bar can look very different based on uh, whatever it is that you're doing. Um, and then this is the new one in, um, in uh, you know, WinForms, and it's so nice. This is a tree map that's bound to a huge collection. Notice how I can change up all the themes, uh, but this is bound to a collection of cars here and their sales. I can click on each one. I can see the information. Uh, what is even nicer is if I go into another demo, which is, uh, you know, showing uh, population, world population, uh, showing the title, and it's enabling grouping, right? So it's showing by Asia and Africa and Americas. Uh, if I take it away, now you see like China, India, United States are the big, you know, countries. So uh, real easy, like look at the, you know, the, uh, you know, the UX here, you can tap on every one of these things. In one look, the user gets to understand the comparisons in your hierarchical data. 
uh, and you can change up the color palettes and render this however you want. So really, really nice, um, you know, uh, UI. Now, uh, I have like one minute left. I want to show you two more things uh, so folks can play around with this. Uh, all of the WinUI, you know, controls that I saw and that I showed you, those are in the, in the demo itself, but there are a lot more apps that we're putting out. For example, this is a CRM application written entirely in WinUI that showcases all the things that your dashboard might need, right? You know, think of a sales dashboard, uh, you know, charts and graphs and, you know, different types of companies, uh, you know, drilling down with, you know, uh, you know, panel bars and charts, all of it, it's all done with WinUI. Uh, and all running on .NET 6, right? So take a look at the source code for all of that. And the one that I really like is uh, for, um, you know, uh, WPF in particular, we have a color theme generator and we have like uh, half a dozen apps that you know, the team puts together. You can download and install and look at the source code for every one of those apps. Uh, the source code is in your downloads uh, directory, uh, but this is an app and it's, it's a heavy app because it shows you all of our UI and Microsoft UI as well. Uh, so this is all of the basic controls and you can see how they render and you have a whole bunch of color palettes here to choose from. Uh, you can change up the themes right here, VS 2019, uh, or you can go to Fluent, which means things are going to be a little bit more flatter and you change the palette. Uh, but you get to see exactly how all of this UI is going to look like when you change the theme and then you get to make things your own. And we show you all of our controls, Microsoft controls and all of the you know data visualization controls every control that you can think of pretty much it's, it's all right there. So before you do anything on your app, come here and you know, uh, play around with the colors and uh, see how the UI is looking at. Okay, um, so we are almost uh, at time here. Uh, and let me go back here and uh, let's see where we stopped. Um, I, I think uh, that's all the polls we had. Uh, so I know we are you know, getting close to time here, but Ed, is there any quick um, Q&A we could, we could do? Um, let's see, we answered where do we can grab the stuff on th samples. Um, and, uh, you know, the thing that we are missing out showing, and I mean, we could go on, but we, we want to be careful of your time here as well. Um, but, uh, you know, the whole Blazor hybrid story, um, there is, in fact, uh, I can show you a quick little, um, uh, URL here if I can find it. Uh, yep, so again, uh, Stamo from uh, from our Blazor team has put this together. It's it's out there so you can look at it. Um, this is our Blazor UI working inside of a Maui app. All the charts, graphs, grids. This is uh, stuff working inside of a WinForms application. Um, this is stuff working inside of a WPF app. So this is absolutely a reality. It's just not a production reality yet until, you know, .NET Maui ships. But, you know, um, with uh, .NET 6 carrying the LTS badge, uh, we are seeing a lot of customers kind of think about modernization, you know, migrating your apps to the latest runtime. So as you are thinking it through, think about how you can share code better between, you know, your web and mobile and desktop apps. Yeah. Uh, we, we did have uh, something a little bit from a little bit earlier. I want to kind of rewind to uh, okay. uh, Larry was asking about um, how have the tools and libraries been optimized for the Apple M1 chip? And, yeah. Sam, yeah, yeah. you're the Apple yeah, expert no. here. <laughs> no, it's been interesting. And actually, uh, most of it, uh, most of the work is for Microsoft. Uh, and uh, yeah, everything works. You know, if you are running .NET Maui, you can run it on Intel, you can run it on M1. And uh, our controls will not get in the way because we will use whatever is out of the box in Maui, either native, then we know how to do it on iOS, Android, and Mac or Windows. Or if you are using something like Skia Sharp, then we also know how to paint pixels. But we are kind of sitting on top of those platforms. So uh, for us, uh, I mean, we are not going to hold you back from going to M1. Yeah, and I, I also mentioned we're going to stream about that on our Twitch channel uh, very yeah. soon. So uh, we'll, we have I have a uh, Mac Mini with an M1, so we're going to kick the tires on that on yeah. the uh, yeah. Twitch channel. And actually, speaking of uh, Twitch, like this is where you can come and join us. Like for the webinars, we have a limited amount of time to cover all the things, and you know our engineers are kind of uh, supporting us, uh, and we are you know standing on the shoulder of you know a lot of work that's been going in. But if you just want to kind of see us, you know, raw and uh, you know tinkering with stuff, sometimes failing, come and join us uh, on Twitch. Uh, we are uh, on most of the time, and everything gets recorded and put out on YouTube. Uh, but we are at time here. Um, uh, we want to thank, you know, first up our, our product teams and 
uh, folks who bring you all of this release every uh, you know three to four times a year. And we want to thank all of you for you know taking time out of your day to come and hang out with us. Uh, hopefully, all of this uh, enables you to be more successful uh, as you kind of start up this year. And uh, yeah, we wish you all the best. And uh, you know where to reach us. Uh, you know through support channels or Ed or me if you just want to reach out to us. Absolutely. All right, folks, uh, that's it from us. And uh, we hope you have a great rest of your day. And thank you again. Bye-bye. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye.